Uh, yes, when it is six o'clock, we zoom recording. All right. Um, good day once again. It's evening over here. Good evening, everyone. Um, greetings from Paris. I am Olushe Yakimbo Uh Let me first of all confirm. Can you all hear me? Yes. Can... Okay. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yes, we can hear you. And then, can you all see me as well? Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so my name is Olushe Yakimbo Ade, and I will be the moderator for today's discussion. Um, I'm currently a student in Reservoir Geoscience and Engineering at IFP School here. Uh, I'm being sponsored by PTDF, Petroleum Trail Development Fund uh, from Nigeria. And um, I would first of all give you guys um, a quick overview of um, IFP school, the programs, the application, the procedures, and all of that. And then some insights about scholarships. And um, that'll be the first part. Then the second part will be a roundtable discussion where we have um, we've looked through the registration from everyone here, and then we we selected the top three programs and then we found three people from there and uh, they'll be discussing with us here today. Then after that, we will now go for the Q&A questions, the, the Q&A session so that we can answer all your various questions. Uh, so let me just quickly make some very important points here. Everything that you hear from us, if you follow everything into details, you, you take our advice, you do everything as we have said, uh, and you apply to IFP school, we are not guaranteeing you that you will be admitted to the school. It's just a, what we are doing here for you is telling you what could be um, from our own personal experience. You could apply, you could do exactly the same thing. It does not necessarily guarantee you 100% uh, maybe admission or scholarship because that is left at the hands of the institution and then the sponsors as well. Uh, we would encourage you to regularly check IFP's website uh, and the school's LinkedIn page for regular updates. So a brief outline of what we'll be discussing today, um, a, brief, a bit of introduction, some programs, admission conditions, uh, sponsorships, and then the second part will start the roundtable discussion and then a Q&A session. Uh, so IFP school in numbers. Um, we have 15 master's level programs in IFP school. Uh, roughly about 500 graduates per year, over 16,000 active alumni. Um, more than half of us actually are international students. And just as an example, uh, in my class, even though we are in a, we are in a French environment, we only have one person that is uh, French, just to give you an idea of how diverse IFP school can be. 80% uh, of us are sponsored, usually more than that, and then we have about 180 partner companies involved with IFP school. For the masters, there are basically four kinds of masters that you might be interested in. Uh, and then there's a PhD option too as well. For the masters, we have a specialized engineering graduate degree. There'll be more on that later. Um, we have research masters, orient, orient, uh, research that is uh, we have master's program that is research-based, and then we have a specialized master's program. Thankfully, we have someone from one of those programs that would also be on our round table. And then there's an executive master program that is jointly organized by the BI Norwegian Business School. Usually it's for professionals, people that have worked a couple of years before, uh, before they enroll for that. And then the PhD, uh, we didn't cover much on PhD in this discussion. Uh, that's mostly because one, everybody that was applying or most of the people that, that uh, registered for this event are seeking for knowledge about master's program. 
Um, for the specialized engineering graduate degree, what we have are basically four main categories. We have the powertrains and sustainable, multi, uh, sustainable mobility. We have processes for energy and chemicals. We have energy economics and management, and also georesources and energy. So basically, depending on your specific interest, um, depending on what you would like to do in the future, uh, you have three broad themes to choose from. And by the time you go into those themes, there are specific programs that you might find very interesting for, for you. And just as an example, because my, um, my undergraduate background is petroleum engineering, if I choose to go for the georesources and energy, I can find myself in petroleum engineering and project development, uh, reservoir geoscience and engineering, or petroleum geosciences. Currently, I'm in the reservoir geoscience and engineering program. We also have people that have uh, choice that have uh, gone for other programs as well. Um, the ETEM, Energy Economics and Management. Uh, basically, that's just a summary of all the things that you can get from IFP if you are going for the for the specialized engineering graduate degree. Now we also have the specialized masters and then the research oriented masters. Uh, let me talk about the specialized masters. So usually, or usually, let me put it that way. Usually, uh, the specialized masters are for people that uh, sometimes might have done a previous master's degree, but want to focus on something in particular. You want to focus on something in particular, and you want to come to IFP school. There are two options for you: the geodata management for energy mix, and then combustion, electric, and hybrid powertrains. Those are two options that you can go for. And then if you want to do something that is more research-based, then you would have uh, these other three programs that are here. The catalysis and processes, EEET, and then electrification of automotive propulsion. Uh, one other thing I should quickly note now is that usually, in fact, in all cases here, all the programs here, all the five programs here, uh, they're going to be done in partnership with an institution. All of them are in partnership with another school, while the combustion electric and hybrid power trains is in partnership with IFP training, which is another uh, company on its own outside of IFP school, but they are still linked. So you should just take note of that. If you want to apply to all these other programs, uh, you might have something to do with another institution. Another thing that is very important to note is that um, some of the programs are taught in French and others are taught in English. The yellow arrow directs you to programs that are taught in English. Um, basically, many of the things I'm seeing right here is on the school's website. You just need to go to, you can just put it on Google, IFP school. The very, usually the very first um, item on the list is the school's page. By the time you go to programs, uh, you'll be able to see all of this here. And by the time you, you click on each of them, you can get more ideas, more information about your specific choice or specific interests. Uh, let me quickly also speak a little bit on the program duration. Uh, sorry, this slide looks a bit busy, but it's just to tell you that a whole host of program durations exist in IFP school. Uh, in general, you do parts of your study in IFP, and then you do another part, maybe in a, in a company or in partner institutions. And even with that, those things can vary in terms of duration. And as an example, uh, I'm in the reservoir geoscience and engineering program. For my specific case, um, I'll be doing this 16 months continuous program where I'll do about 11 months, 11, 12 months in IFP, and then the rest will be for internship in a company. Some other programs, uh, you might do something like three months, like the 16 months alternating school or company program, you might do three months in 
a specific institution, just as another example again, uh, for the ETEM program, that's economics, technology, uh, energy technology, economics management program. You, some people, depending on what you choose, let me be specific here. Some people might do part of it in the US, in Colorado School of Mines. I have a friend, a colleague like that. He did his first three months in US. Now he's currently in IFP school. After a while, he's going to go back to US to finalize his studies. Others, it might be school, company, uh, school, and then company again, depending. And let's also not forget that uh, we could also have a situation where um, your program is 11 to 13 months. That's usually the case for the specialized, for the specialized uh, programs, for the specialized master's program, like the geo, geo energy program. That's just 11 to 13 months. Uh, and that's it. And okay, let me also touch about this specific case. We also have cases where you go for 22 months, where you do some part of it with IFP school, another part of it with uh, a company, and it can last for as long as 22 months. Um, all of this information is available on the website. It's very important that uh, depending on what you are interested in, if you want a double degree, for instance, you have to go to the website, see what are the schools that are important. Uh, you also have to check to be sure that, uh, as an example again, um, if you want to apply for some double degree programs, you have to apply here in IFP school and then in the other school as well. At least that I'm very sure for the ETEM program. If you want to do energy technology and economics management, you would have to apply for Colorado School of Mines first and then you would have to apply to IFP school and be granted admission in both cases so depending on what you're interested in you can always get more information on the website uh, for the admissions conditions like many other universities uh, four or five years of BSc education um, and then I've also mentioned something like this joint admissions yeah, if you are applying to IFP school, you must get admission here. And if you are, especially with a double degree program, the other school as well, you must also get admission there. And then we have our English requirements and then the French requirements. I'll speak a little bit more on the English requirements in the next slide. But one other thing that you should note is the program schedule. Um, I think by the 31st of March, there will be no longer you won't have the opportunity to send in your applications again. So if you haven't done so, I urge you to really do that. And from there, you go through the whole process of um, evaluation that will be done in house in the school before they start calling for interviews. And uh, as you are doing this as well, you should also be applying to scholarships as simultaneously. That's also very important. So for the English, um, I remember during the registration, somebody asked a question. I'll try to answer that here as well. Generally, if you are from specific countries, if your official language is, is in English, um, a list of them are here. Uh, don't necessarily, they will also say it again, don't necessarily assume that once you see this list here, then that's it permanently. IFP school can decide to change some things. They might decide to add some new countries. So please regularly check the websites for more information. Um, we have these countries here, South Africa and the likes. Um, but generally, if you've taken English also in a in an institution, if you have taken a if you have done a degree in an institution that speaks English, usually you are you are you meet the English requirements. So the question, if I remember correctly, was if um, the person was saying he or she was studying in the UK already for a master's degree. So if you have studied in the UK and you want to come to IFP, I believe that you should be able to. Uh, you wouldn't need to do any IELTS or TOEFL or TOEIC. But then again, we've experienced cases here in IFP school where your application might be very good, but at that particular point in time, maybe you don't have the English requirements. 
So usually you would have to take intensive English courses, maybe during the summer or even during the school as well, during the program as well. And you would be mandated to write the TOEIC exam so that you can get your certificates. Because even if, even if they admit you and you've not, without your English requirements now, you won't be able to get your certificate. So it's still compulsory that you, you get certified in English language. And that's if and only if you're applying to uh, English programs. Uh, I know this is the part where everyone wants to really get to know about. In terms of funding, there are basically two categories. There's one on one end, the institutions, then on the other end, we have companies. Uh, let me start with the company. So from my experience and I, as well as other students, we've come to realize that uh, company sponsorship takes probably if not maybe 90% of the number of students that are here. And uh, we have companies like uh, Total Energies, Equinor, Trident Energy, Perenco, and even GNPC as well. That's Ghana National Petroleum uh, Company. And uh, other institutions that exist, like in my own case, uh, PTDF, Petroleum Technology Development Fund, that's from Nigeria. And then another institution is the Foundation Talk. I would quickly say something on the Foundation Talk. Uh, for the Foundation Talks program, usually you do not have to apply to it usually. What typically happens is you, when you send in your application to IFP school, um, the school might choose to, depending on the funding with the alumni and all of that, the school might choose to select some candidates from their, their pool of candidates, send it to the foundation and depending on the availability of funds and all of that, then Foundation Talk might now decide to sponsor some select students. So that's usually how that one works. Then there's another case also within the company side is apprenticeships. In that case, you'd have to share, you'd have to sign some kind of um, agreements with the institution that you're looking at, usually with the company, um, it will stipulate some agreement terms. And once you're okay with that, you'll be in a school work position. So you come to school a bit, you might go to work a bit for apprenticeship, go back to school and all of that. So it depends on the agreements that you have. Uh, uh, there are many, a lot of apprenticeships offers. If you just go to the school's website and then you check the sponsors page, you will definitely see a whole list of companies that are there. I really urge you to look out for that. And then this is also very important. Uh, IFP school is organizing an event for sponsorship, apprenticeships, and we would send to all, our, all the people that have registered for today's session. I think it is very important for you to attend this one. Um, it's the first time the IFP is doing something like this, at least to my knowledge. It's the very, very first time. Uh, it's very important that all the students here, if you are hearing my voice, if you are in this program, uh, you partake in it so that you can actually hear from the this, this sponsors themselves because they'll be coming to IFP school to give their own presentation. And I think it's important that everybody should attend. We will send out the links to register to all the emails and uh, Please, it's it's just on the 9th of February. Make it a date for yourself if you are really curious to know about funding, scholarships, and the rest. And then, by the way, uh, I think I just did a little LinkedIn search and I found that uh, you can easily see, there are still some sponsorship going on, just in case you are unaware of it. Uh, I just search for IFP school on LinkedIn and I saw so and I clicked on jobs and I saw a couple of uh, sponsorships available. In case you haven't done that yet, I urge you to do so as well. It's very important that you start the processes on time. And now 
once you've made up your mind that and the, once you've made up your mind on the program that you want to apply for the next step for you is to really start the application process you need your application file your cv your cover letter and then the recommendation letter you'd also need a copy of your passport or id um, usually um, soft copies of your university qualifications your transcripts sometimes and then no transcripts every time that will be required uh, you can apply for three programs at the most and like i mentioned earlier you must look for sponsorship simultaneously the application is still currently ongoing so you just have to go to ifp school website uh, by the time you click submit your application online, you'd be able to access this page on this, uh, you'd be able to access this page here. You create an application, the application file, and then you can now begin your process. We'll definitely cover some of the, the prompts that comes up usually when you are doing the application file. Having said all of that, um, we will start the roundtable discussion. I have three guests with me, Rodrigo, Chloe, and Abbas. Uh, the three of you, if you can hear me, you can put on your video so people can see you and you can say hello to them. Rodrigo is from the Geodata Management for Energy Mix. He's sponsored by Equinor. Uh, Chloe is from the Reservoir Geoscience and Engineering Program. She's sponsored by Total Energies. And then we have Abbas from Petroleum Engineering and Project Developments, also sponsored by Total Energies. Uh, guys, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, perfect, yes. perfect, perfect. All right, all right. So uh, for the roundtable program, for this discussion, we will just, uh, I would, uh, bring out some points and then ask some questions and then you just give your feedback on how some of these processes went and all of that. Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, we can start with a bit of uh, introduction from maybe from Rodrigo. We can start with you first. Uh, your, I've mentioned your name already, but you can still say your name, your program, uh, maybe why IFP, what country you're from, uh, just generally just tell us uh, a little bit about yourself so that the audience can uh, get a feel of who you are. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you, Lucia. Thank you for inviting me here. Um, I'm really pleased to share my uh, my experience with the potential students or potential applicants to IP school. Just to make it short, um, my name is Rodrigo Ceballos. I'm from La Paz, Bolivia. A beautiful country, by the way. And if you want to visit it, I totally recommend it to you. And um, I did my bachelor's degree over there as a petroleum engineer. I graduated in 2018. Then in 2019, I've been awarded um, a achieving a scholarship for pursuing a master's degree in the United Kingdom. Over there, I finished a um, master's degree in reservoir evaluation and management at Herdwood University. Therefore, I'm a reservoir engineer. And in 2021, uh, once, once I get back to, to Bolivia, I work for the National Hydrocarbons Agency over there, where uh, I started to, um, to think more about data, data management or data science, ma machine learning, and that, that kind of stuff that um, always kept my attention. So um, under that moment, in that moment, I decided just to look for opportunities to continue studying. And I found out that the IFP school, especially the program in geoenergy data management uh, for the energy mix uh, will suit very well for my, for my career goals that I have. And I decided to apply. I decided to apply. And thanks to God, I've been, I know, I've been selected by Equinor to, for being my sponsor. I'm about to finish my classes. Uh, by the end of February and in March, I go to Norway for continuing my uh, the program by doing an internship with them. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Oh, okay. Uh, just one question. Uh, it's only once you applied to IFP and you got it, right? Or did you apply previously and you never got 
No, no, it's uh, the first time that I applied to IUP school. Um, I, I've been accepted. All right, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Chloe, I think you can also give us a brief uh, introduction about yourself too. Okay, so uh, I'm uh, Chloe Tournu. I'm uh, French and I did my, uh, and my master degree. It's a uh, engineering school in Bordeaux in France uh, as well. Uh, so in geoscience, geology, and uh, then I, uh, I mean, I think uh, during my uh, previous internships, I uh, was thinking, uh, so what should I do next? And I thought that maybe my master's degree was not uh, enough to uh, get me like the best uh, job opportunities. So I wanted to have uh, like other skills or the uh, competence on, on my side on my CV. So um, the reservoir uh, engineering uh, got my attention. Um, I also wanted more, uh, I, it's kind of like, I, I missed uh, uh, not enough, but uh, numbers basically in uh, geology. And uh, I think uh, reservoir is a good, um, I don't know, it's a good uh, add in to uh, my previous skills. So that's what I wanted to, to uh, learn about in the reservoir engineering um, program. And uh, so YIFP, uh, I think it's a well-known uh, institution already and a good opportunity to network and to meet new people from new uh, horizons, from the multicultural uh, uh, space. So that was uh, my motivation basically. And uh, it was my first time applying for to it. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, Abbas, would yeah. you also please introduce yourself to our audience? Yes, yeah, certainly. So uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today, sharing my, my experience. So my name is Abbas Sahili. I'm Lebanese. And uh, I started studying back in Lebanon geoscience uh, at the Lebanese University. And then I came to France to do a double degree at the Higher National School of Geology. Uh, so I did more about geoscience, geophysics. And then I specialized in reservoir engineering. Here where I joined Total Energies the last year for my internship. So I did six months internship in, uh, in the reservoir geomodeling and history matching and so on. And uh, the plan to join the, the IFP is, is not new. It's since 2018, I decided that I want to do the IFP. And I consolidated this, uh, this orientation after doing reservoir. I, uh, I've had this, 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 uh, this vision of seeing the whole story, not only the reservoir story. And this is, the, this is where I, I've chosen the Petroleum Engineering and Project Development Program because it uh, shows a broad vision of drilling, of production, offshore, reservoir, everything in one place. Uh, so yeah, I'm sponsored by Total and I'm doing the program in apprenticeship. So as you mentioned, the apprenticeship, I spent some of the time at the IFP and the other period uh, at the company applying what I'm, uh, I'm learning. And why the IFP exactly? Because first of all, it's one of the most important energy institutions in the world. You are exposed. Uh, they, they always give the students the top edge technologies in the industry and they know what the industry needs. So, uh, so that's why from a technical point of view, another thing is the fact that the IFP is, uh, is a multicultural environment. You have people from all around the world. So it's a great opportunity also to meet people. So uh, yeah, and uh, it was the first time I applied to the IFP and uh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, maybe just in case people are also wondering, yes, for someone like me, I think uh, so. This is actually my third time of applying. So I'll just say that don't give up. One day could be your. It could be your turn. Um, so the next question I would really like to know about is um, about your cover letter. IFP usually asks for cover letter when you start applying. Uh, generally, the questions around it will be 
Do you think the quantity of cover letter matter? How many pages did you write? Just a question. And then um, what do you think made your cover letter stand out? Uh, Abbas, would you be willing to answer some of those questions just from your own personal yeah, experience? Yeah, yeah, certainly. First of all, uh, in order just to not formalize things, but the cover letter is the first impression of, of the school about you. It, it will reflect who you are, uh, what's your background, and why are you choosing this school and this program? So I guess these are the four main axes to define a motivation letter for the IFP. It's, it's to take the reader throughout your project, your interests, your background. So it must be straight to the point. Uh, for me, it was one page. I tried to, to put everything because I know that there are many applicants and the school, they don't have so much time to read pages and pages of motivation letter to, to show them that I'm really oriented to the point, I know what I want and I can debrief my words. So this is mainly what I can say. So it's a, a brief, but it contains everything that is needed in order to define who you are and what do you want from the school. Oh, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Chloe. Do you mind sharing what your own cover letter was like? Yes, sure. So it was a lot like uh, Abbas. Uh, mm -hmm. I took the same approach, the same strategy, uh, make it short, make it uh, straight to the point. Uh, and uh, I personally, personally had two, three uh, choices that I ranked, but I spoke only about the first one. Uh, so the one that I wanted it the most. I know that some uh, people like in my program uh, also did uh, like uh, a few uh, par uh, a paragraph for each uh, program and they also got accepted. So I don't know, but my strategy was getting to the point and to uh, um, to uh, sorry stress stress on uh, which one uh, I wanted and why and why IFP and uh, why me basically. <laughs> Okay, okay. Thank you so much. And then Rodrigo, do you yeah, tell us sure. about how your cover letter went? Yeah, well, almost uh, Havas and Cleo covered almost the, the main tips, the main structure. So the thing that I can add to those ideas is um, to uh, be clear with what you want and make a singular letter. Don't, don't make um don't try to make um like a template for every university, every company that you're applying for. Make one from scratch for uh, by doing also previous investigation, previous research about um why are you choosing this option. In my case, for example, I like to go with um, this structure that I'm going to explain you right now. Is uh, an introduction paragraph in which just I introduce myself and um I Briefly, I'm Rodrigo Ceballos, I'm a reservoir engineer, and I am interested in this program because it fits well, whatever. And then I, I, I explain very well in two or three paragraphs, which is the body of the cover letter, why I want to join this program. And I also, and, and I, an advice that I give you is to reserve one of those paragraphs to show your interpersonal skills as well. Mm -hmm. um, people, people also like to read uh, about your personality because uh, in a so globalized world, they they want to know if you are able to 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 work to to work in a team in a multicultural society. Uh, if you have different uh, hobbies or whatever, uh, for example, I in I remember in my application that at IFP school, I I put that I like to to be part of teams that I participated many times in different societies um that i also like to to swim i go to play I, I like to go to play tennis some things that you might think are so silly no it's uh, at least under my point of view makes your cover letter more relatable makes you more personal uh the the relation with the one that's written and the last paragraph will be the conclusion which uh, i always advise to for for everyone to um to think about a punching line at the end that uh, the the reader will remind because at the at the end usually the reader uh, is going to go to the introduction and probably to the last to the last the, the conclusion the last uh, the last sentence so focus in that sentence make a punching line so um, the reader can remind you uh, well and 
I usually use only one page for my cover letters. I don't want to to extend it to two. All right, thank you so much. Uh, at least I think one thing I would like everybody to really get um, across is that uh, one, generally people here, at least my audience generally used one page cover letters. So perhaps if you are thinking maybe you should write three pages, maybe more is better. Uh, I can assure you that less in this case seems to be better in many instances. And then uh, generally, like you said, uh, the beginning and the end is very important. So try to make very good punchline statements there. Uh, the CV is just like the cover letter in a way, um, but then um, let me start with you, Rodrigo. So for your CV, did you have any prior work experience? Any, yes. Did you add any extracurricular experience to your CV? Any personal tips for the CV? You can just summarize how your, your yes, CV sure. for IFP application went. Sure, sure. I will be quick as well here. I, I personally don't like to use templates. You can find many templates on the internet, many, mm -hmm. even Word has their own templates. Um, LinkedIn is full of templates and advice. Why I don't want to use, I don't like to use templates because imagine a, you're applying to a company like Total Energy, Shell, Equinor, those companies receive, uh, receive uh, CVs all the time. Mm -hmm. And you want to stand out from the crowd. So by, by Using a template, you probably will will have a, a general. You know, so there's a nice. Little... Yeah. So uh, what I was saying is that if you have a, like a general, general curriculum, a template one, the um, the hiring manager will just see many many stuff like like the same and probably will just throw them away. Um, that's why I made my own template in which um, uh, which I use, and I also tend to personalize it, uh, considering the different um, company which I'm applying for. If for the IFP school, I made a I made a, a, C, a special CV for that one. Uh, for Equinor, I made a I made one for that one as well. And and I don't know if you are aware, but it's uh, during the CV. Um, there are some countries that don't like to 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 receive a photo. There are there are some that uh, that it's okay. So in that case, I have two different CVs: one with my picture and one with uh, with in which I don't I don't have one. So make your research before you, you apply to that company or the IFP school. In this case, for the IFP school, I used uh, one that includes my picture, so no problem at all in, in that case. And Currently, my CV is uh, two pages max. I wanted to make it even shorter in one page, but um, with my experience, uh, my previous work experience, my personal interest and, and everything and all my skills, I couldn't summarize everything. So I had to choose between the most important ones, uh, which ones I, are, are really important to me and, and which ones are important to show to, to, the, to the hiring managers. For example, if I am applying to the geodata management program in my CV, what I'm going to put in the skills, okay, that I know how to code, that I'm interested in learning SQL, that I'm interested in learning machine learning, whatever. So that makes your CV uh, more related to what you are looking for. And um, basically that, uh, Olusei, I will, I will give, leave room to the other guys to talk about it. All right, thank you. Uh, Chloe, can you share something about your, your CV? Yes, okay, so uh, very interesting uh, to have a different point of view because uh, to my uh, experience, uh, we need to, to, to uh, down it to one page uh, quite uh, in, a, in a lot of, uh, of cases and that was my case too, but I didn't have a work experience, so that was also, uh, uh, I mean, easier to me maybe. Uh, so I highlighted my internships that was uh, the closest to my uh, work experience. Okay. And uh, it was with Total. So when I applied for Total sponsorship, it was a kind of a plus. Okay. Um, I put it also uh, my uh, Erasmus, that was a, a proof of uh, international, international experience uh, that, could, uh, that could help uh, on the application. So, and to prove also that uh, the, the English requirements were already met for, for me. 
and um, some uh, so association um, uh, positions. So I was, for example, co-president uh, in the back in my school of uh, an association of students. So I put it out that, and uh, I think it's always good to, to put uh, things like that. And um, to my um, to my part, I didn't put a, a photo, for example. Um, so I don't know, like uh, apparently uh, they accept a lot of uh, diversity uh, of CVs. <laughs> so that's uh, just nice. And um, I wanted to say, uh, sorry, it will, it will come back. No, yeah, I wanted to say that uh, the CV, uh, as you might think, is really important, but uh, I can't stress that uh, uh, more that it, uh, it is uh, truly important because they will take your CV. We will uh, discuss this uh, later, but they will take your CV and uh, in, uh, base their interview on this uh, when they will uh, interview you. But we will uh, get to this uh, later on. So that's it. All right, thank you. Uh, Abbas, can you also share yours as well? Yeah, yeah, Any certainly so. Tips? Yeah. yeah, so uh, I guess uh, that uh, Rodrigo and the Cole, they, uh, they uh, they summarized every essential point. Uh, so I'm I'm a one pagers guy. So I like everything related to cover letter and CV to be one page. I guess it's it's really important. I will not add lots of details because they already shared. Um, there is no format that is defined by the IFP. So I uh, I don't know there's a European format or something like that. It's not uh, it's not uh, asked by the IFP. So there's nothing really specific. Um, I remember that I I was having a photo on, on my CV. So uh, this is just to assure that uh, you can add it or not. It will not change anything. What I would say is that make sure that you know how to answer any question about any word in your CV, because this is really, really important. So to, to put things that you could elaborate, that you can explain, for example, volunteering, they may ask you questions about examples of volunteering. So uh, so yeah, for, for people with no prior experience, I guess adding extracurricular activities is really helpful because this will, will, will allow the CV to be full to, to add whatever uh, seems to be relevant. Because I guess the IFP, they are not only looking for people who are academic, ac academically good, but uh, at the same time who are good at the cultural and social level. Because as we said, it's a multicultural environment. Uh, so yeah, this is what, what I can add to, to what my colleagues already, already said. Okay, okay. So for the CVs, like you, you've heard from all of them, uh, two pages, one pages, uh, maybe doesn't matter so much. Uh, two pages, perhaps maybe if you are like Rodrigo and you've worked in a bit and then uh, you've, ha you've done so many things in the past, uh, but usually you could also still try to keep it to one page and uh, IFP school doesn't discriminate whether you put a photo on or not. It doesn't, I don't think it matters anyways. Let me put it that way. Uh, let's quickly talk a bit about the application file. Uh, so when you begin applying to IFP school, there will be about uh, four prompts, um, basically about four prompts that I think are very, very important that we will just maybe rough quickly talk about in this aspect. Uh, we can start with the very first prompt. Um, by the way, there are other prompts too as well. Your name, load your application from your, your transcript and all of that. But we are just going to talk about the four key points that would involve some a bit of writing. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is this question. Have you ever held the position of responsibility and then under what circumstance? So um, Abbas, would you mind sharing or just giving us a very quick overview of um, what you wrote to doing that part? Um, uh, the question was the the one of responsibility. Yeah, yeah. 
so I was talking, um, I was mainly talking about the, uh, I, I actually forgot, ask someone else and I will, I will, uh, maybe my, one of my colleagues can intervene just to, oh, okay. to make no, sure. No that, problem, no problem. Yeah. Uh, Chloe, do you mind sharing yours? Do you remember? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, All right. So, yes, about this, I mentioned it before. So, in my school, we had this uh, association that organized this uh, uh, gala. So, the, the, I mean, everything that uh, related to the graduation event. And I uh, was uh, volunteering for the for three years in this association, and now and I was uh, president for one year also of this uh, association. So that's what I mentioned, for example, uh, in this uh, in this question. I was also volunteering in um, in the sport uh, association in my school. So okay. basically, that's what I put. Okay, perfect, perfect, uh, Rodrigo. Yes, sure. Regarding this question, this position of responsibility, well, uh, for me, this question uh, was not very difficult to answer since uh, during my life, during my undergrad studies and my master's studies in the UK, I had uh, opportunities to lead different teams. Mm -hmm. um, in I remember in these questions, I in, in this question, I divided it into three parts, into three mm -hmm. main parts, which are, um, uh, which were the three clear examples of when I lead the uh, different teams or in, even in my life and something that I wanted to show up also uh, to the to IFP school is that I build a leader in my community not only in academic related uh, related um, processes or, yeah. or, or or whatever and I remember that I gave some uh, um, leadership examples of my daily life uh, as a brother, for example, my family, and um, the other ones were more related to academics. Um, be clear in your examples. Mm -hmm. uh, use all the words that you are allowed to do that I don't remember very well if there's a limit or not. Um, be concise and also show results because sometimes it's, it's easy to say, hey, I, le I led a team of uh, 100 people for over five years and that's it. Mm -hmm. no, but then you have to uh, to to add more to that example, um, like what were the results or my team because of uh, I led my team to this kind of thing. Um, the improvement in, in in the income for my company is uh, are now five five more five percent more or ten percent more. I don't know. And you can find different results, different uh, markers for every example that you can you can have. Um, uh, that relates to leadership responsibility or a position of responsibility in this case. No, oh, okay, okay. Uh, Abbas, yeah, do you recall? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> because uh, there are many, many examples. But what, what, what I used is the fact that I, uh, I studied abroad, mm -hmm. uh, and I came to France, and I'm not French educated. So it was the time for me to to manage everything at the personal and at the uh, uh, at the educational level. So mm -hmm. I talked mainly about that because I will come back back to the point of Rodrigo. Rodrigo is to to always make it solid, not uh, not flying in the air. So to 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 consolidate your answer with examples to show how you hold the responsibility, uh, how how you how you managed. Uh, to uh, to do it so yeah okay. i mainly i mainly would i mainly talked about uh, about my experience abroad okay okay uh, yeah. uh rodrigo um there's also another question that usually comes up what is your career plan you mind sharing what you you wrote during your time if you remember everything yes yes totally and this is crucial. This is very important, guys. I think this is the, for me, is the most important part um, of the application process because it will show the intention to, to, to the hiring manager or to the recruiter that why do you want to join the IAP school? And many people is rejected because they they fail on, on um, showing why they, are, what they want to join these kind of programs. 
In my case, for example, uh, since I already uh, I, I already had a master's degree in reservoir engineering program, I wanted to mix my background with geo with data management basically, and uh, so I was looking for programs as I, as I was telling you, and then and you have to ask yourself why do you want to pursue that master's degree and how is going to impact in your life in the short, mid, and long term. Um, based on that, what I did is to um, again, follow the same structure that I like to do, which is three paragraphs. The first paragraph in the short term, how I think the geodata management program will impact in my career. Um, mm -hmm. And for, for answer that specific part, I did a lot of research. Like I contacted my previous students, they gave me their opinion. I contact, I checked the website of, the, of IP school what are the main topics, the main subjects, and I started doing my research about, uh, okay, I'm going to, to learn how to manage a database or data warehousing and business intelligence. How can I apply this in the in the short term? And they started making a plan. Okay, uh, it, although we learn from the pandemic that it's very difficult to, to plan ahead, you have to do it. In the short term, I see myself uh, mixing my background in reservoir engineering and, and um, applying the concepts of data management to apply data warehousing and business intelligence in, in, in an energy company. And then I, you start, uh, you start um, writing more about it. And then my second paragraph is about my midterm plans. Um, how, do you, how do I plan to transition? And I remember very well that I wanted to not only remain in the reservoir engineering domain, but also to expand to the energy transition topics. And then I started to mention when I will be gaining more, more experience in the energy industry, maybe I can be part of a geothermal energy projects, CCUS, et cetera, and also with a focus on data management. And the, the, the key part is to include in each paragraph why this program will be beneficial for you. And my my last uh, my last paragraph was my long term plans. Like in twenty years, uh, what can I achieve? And it, this is this is even more difficult to 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 see because it's twenty years ahead. You don't know what what yeah. what's going to happen in your life, right? But uh, in my case, um, I remember that I put that I want to be, I want to become an energy market analyst, and for that I have to gain experience in the sector and know how it works in every different parts of the world. Um, I know that data management will will, uh, will play a crucial role in any of these uh, kind of topics, so different subjects. And then um, I had like a concrete idea of why I wanted to join uh, this master program and, and why it's going to, um, to be helpful for my career. Uh, that's what I can summarize, Jose. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Chloe, can you also share what you uh, put down for yours? So, uh, which uh, which was the question again? Sorry. Yeah, uh, what is your career plan? Okay, so um, I uh, didn't uh, develop as much as uh, Rodrigo, I think. Um, I specifically think um, develop on the short term, and uh, basically that I wanted to be a, a reservoir engineer and that and what uh, it would bring to me uh, as a geologist that uh, I was by my studies. And um, also that my, um, basically my goal was to, uh, to aim for uh, like the, the cleaner, um, uh, the clear applications of uh, of uh, reservoir engineering, such as uh, CCUS or geothermal energy, uh, but uh, I also mentioned that uh, I will be willing to uh, to work in the oil and gas industry, of course, uh, as much as we need it. Um, and um, so, yes, I specified that, and um, I th I think I. Uh, I think I just mentioned also that I wanted to to have a job that is really uh, like uh, challenging for me, and uh, that I think that would be the case uh, in, in any case because uh, reservoir engineering was a new thing for me. So yeah, that was uh, my approach at least. Thank you, thank you, uh, Abbas. 
Yeah. Uh, so from my side, uh, first of all, uh, as uh, as as uh, as my colleagues mentioned, it's really an, a very essential part in the uh, in the in the application, and it's the part where you show why you and why they must choose you. So um, it's 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 about defining, uh, showing how much serious you are. And um, and uh, I guess the most important part of this of of developing this paragraph is to make a link between your story and the program you are applying for. So, for instance, for me, I have geoscience and reservoir engineering background, but I know I um, I know that I I would like to work in project engineering, so in the developing offshore platforms and uh, uh, operations. So that's how I linked. Okay, I have a background in reservoir, but it's not the full story because in project I need to have the full story of everything, of uh, of the platform dimensioning, of subsea, of the wells, of reservoir, of uh, logistics, HSE, etc. And the PEPD program was answering all these uh, these questions or uh, filling all these gaps in my knowledge. So that's how I developed. So uh, this uh, from one side, I consolidated why this program. And from the other side, I, I show I showed how it's uh, it coincides with my with my career with my career plan and being a project engineer, for instance. So yeah, it's it's to show, if I want to summarize, it's to show the added value that will bring to you after following this program. So what, what at, the, at the end of this program, uh, is it is it the, 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 the version of you that you need in, in your work, in your career? That's it. It's to show that uh, it's the delicate transition, for instance, between the educational life and the professional life. So, uh, so yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, let me also ask you this question, Abbas. Uh, yeah. Uh, I remember this question popped up. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I think so. Well, yeah. apply. Could you, you sorry, answer sorry. that strategically? Could, do anything? Uh, hold on, hold on. Could, could you come back because we weren't able to hear you? Oh, okay. Can you hear me yeah. now? Yeah, I'm able now. Okay, so I was asking uh, the question uh, that the question prompt that came up, at least, uh, if your application is refused, what will you do? Uh, I don't know, was there any specific strategy that you decided to use to answer that question? Did you tell them the truth? Did you give them partial, tr partial true or false? Because one thing that usually happens is uh, students are always applying to multiple schools. So I don't know, how did you manage to handle that situation? Uh, so just to, to make sure that I well understood the question, you are asking if someone uh, got uh, refused by the IFP, uh, what uh, what he he or she must do, uh, uh, is it? Okay, so what I'm asking is during the application file itself. I don't know yeah. if you remember that. It's just like, what is your career um, plan? The yeah, question yeah, yeah. that came up: If your yeah, application yeah. Is refused, what will you do? How did you answer that question? Ah, uh, yeah, I remember well this this question. It it was actually the answer was. Uh, is to develop myself during the year and apply another time. It's okay. to show to show the 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 the, the whole interest uh, in the IFP. So if if I'm if I will not be accepted now, it's because I don't I don't maybe I don't have all the elements to to be there. But I will work hard on myself to apply another mm -hmm. time for the IFP and get admitted. So this is mainly, uh, I remember I answered like that. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Chloe, do you mind sharing how you answered that prompt? Uh, okay, so I, uh, I answered that I will, uh, if they so reject my, um, <clears throat> sorry, my profile, they, I would look for um, job application on uh, reservoir engineering or a geologist. And uh, if I got any two of this position, and um, I mean, uh, I'm doing well in my job, um, I might um, like, um, I mean, I'm, I have already 
uh, reach my goal. So, um, and uh, if I don't need any more, uh, I mean, any other um, uh, educational skills, at least uh, on, on this part, uh, I'll be happy. I mean, uh, I'll be in the position I wanted and uh, that'll be great. But in the case, I would apply to jobs and uh, won't uh, find uh, like a reservoir engineer position or a geologist position that suits me, then I would probably uh, go back to IHP school application. Oh, okay. Okay. So that means you were very honest during your own. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Nice. Nice. And now about you, Rodrigo, how did you answer that prompt? Yes, I remember this question very well. And as Abbas and Chloe, I was very straightforward. I told them uh, I will apply next year, but during the meantime, I will keep learning by my own um, all the topics because this is what I want to do. I want to I want to mix my background in reservoir engineering with data management. And if I'm not admitted to IFP school, I will learn by my own. And that's it. I didn't I didn't take too much time to answer to that question, to be honest. It was being honest and 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 like that. Okay, okay. Uh in like maybe within uh, in a few seconds, could you I know this might sound uh, cliche, but in a few seconds, could you also talk about how you answer this question? What are your hobbies, cultural, sporting, and other interests? Do you think the school was really interested to know? I mean, just tell us how your own idea about the question and how you answered it. Oh yeah, I remember this question very well. And I, as the previous one, I also, uh, I was also honest. I, I told them what everything that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, I told them that I like to play the guitar, for example. So I like to 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 have um to have a good time with my friends. We, I also mentioned that back in in some times, like. Five ten years ago, I used to have a band where I used to play the guitar and whatever. And then I I told them as well that I love swimming, uh, I love to play football. I don't know whatever you like. Uh, I didn't make up anything here. It's uh, it was also being honest because uh, something that I like about the school is that it shows interest in what you like. I remember the inter integration day. It was also very good. Um, but yeah, but basically that uh, these these two questions were not uh, very difficult to answer. Uh, I didn't I didn't spend too much time because uh, you don't have to do any research. You know yourself, you know what you like, you know what you don't like. And um, it's also a nice way to show how your personality is. And I like to travel. I like to to eat a different kind of dishes, dishes from all over the world. Um, and uh, basically that put whatever you whatever you are, don't don't try to to fool anyone. And, uh, here is remember that. Uh, that the school is not looking for the candidate that uh, that is only always studying, that is uh, all the time in the library, that uh, that only tries to uh, to study and to stand up. No, they are they are also looking for people that that can uh, demonstrate that they can be work and they can be they can feel safe in a multicultural environment, that they can learn from others, that they they are able to improve their personal skills, and they 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 want to try um different things and i remember here as well that uh since i mentioned that i like to travel like, like to get to know different cultures uh i mentioned that i wanted to to get to know more about the french culture and and probably they like that i don't know uh i remember i was very explicit i want to try this and this and this i want to take a picture or with a baguette under the tour the the eiffel tower for example <laughs> I, I I was trying to be more not not so serious in this kind of question because uh, I don't know I wanted to show in some some uh, in different letters in in a different um, in the way that you write your essay or your answer uh, to show uh, as well your personality and I'm an easygoing guy I like to to smile and uh, <laughs> I like to do this kind of stuff so uh, basically that being honest with uh, what you want with yourself. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, Chloe? Uh, yes, sure. So I think uh, Rodrigo had uh, really good points yeah. and very good uh, pieces of advice. So 
uh, keep them uh, in mind. I, to my uh, side, for example, uh, unlike him, I didn't develop my uh, personality in the, uh, the cover letter. So this was the time to me to, uh, to share about this. And uh, don't uh, hesitate to, to share your, page, your passions, your, uh, your the sports that is uh, close to your heart or everything. Uh, because they will uh, so read this and then uh, ask about it in the interview. So really don't hesitate to be uh, honest on this and uh, share as much as you want. And, um, and that would be a, that'd be a great uh, time of discussion in the interview and uh, maybe the less uh, stressful as well. So that'd be good for you. Remember that. Um. All right, thank you. Abbas? Yeah, I will not add, uh, I guess, um, I guess uh, Rodrigo and Kole, uh, right. they, well, uh, they well summarized everything. So, uh, so yeah, uh, it's only to add, to be honest, to, uh, to be yourself in this part, to elaborate uh, and to to show your interests because uh, yeah the IFP they are not looking only for for people studying twenty four over twenty four because it's not the case even in professional life so this uh, this um, uh, extracurricular everything uh, sport uh, I don't traveling is something really really important to show uh, to, to 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 show yourself as a human being at the end of the day so yeah all right thank you um we'll just go on to uh, the next uh, very interesting thing so usually once you apply you submit your application file uh if you are selected you go for interview about the interview yeah. process Abbas, do you recall anything any question i know it's been a long time uh, yeah 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 interview. yeah i yeah, yeah. I will, uh, yeah i will just link it to the chat because uh, people they are asking about sponsorship and i will link it to the interview i guess the interview is the biggest answer to this to this point actually because uh the ifp they they have offers that are that are posted online with companies but then there are certain offers that are exclusive for the ifp to choose and one of the most important criteria or uh, let's say decision making point is the interview with you when they will interview you they must see that you are trying your best to approach at least companies to because this is a question that is asked uh, what are you doing now regarding sponsorship so yeah. if you show just that that you have the willingness that you are trying your best they will appreciate that and appreciating that meaning that they will consider you for the offers that are exclusive for them. For instance, uh, Rodrigo can develop more on this point, but Equinor, they don't have offers, but it's a relationship between the IFP and Equinor. So it's the interview and how much good you are at the interview uh, that, that will define uh, how how much the the company will the IFP will. Uh, Will 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 represent uh, or will consider your application because for instance for me after the inter I did two interviews with the IFP because this is how it works for PEPD but after the two interviews I got uh, five different sponsorships because I was extremely serious during the interview so this is really important because mm -hmm. the manager started the program manager started to share my profile with companies and then companies started to reach out. So I guess uh, if someone is really serious about the IFP, you must show and and then uh, try, try, try to send to, I don't know, BP, Shell. I know that it may not work. There are huge companies. Try to, to, to contact just to tell the IFP during the interview that, okay, I contacted Equinor, I contacted BP, I contacted Total, I contacted Shell, etc. I'm trying my best. So it's to show how much serious you are. Because there are there are also the uh, the, the 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 sponsored by the IFP from the TAC Foundation. Um, another types of questions certainly to uh, why the IFP, why this program, and if you are applying for more than one program, why these two programs or three programs, and why in this order? These these are questions that you must know very well how to answer. 
Uh, mm. They ask about your extracurricular activities. Uh, what what are your interests? Uh, if you have previous uh, previous uh, experience, uh, uh, working experience, for instance. So uh, all these questions uh, uh, are are possible uh, during the interview. But yeah, I guess well preparing the answer of why the IFP is really important. It's to show uh, really you are understanding what you are doing and what you will be doing is is uh, is, is is really in uh, in line with with your your career path and your you have the full vision. I don't uh, I don't want to say that at the end of my career I want to do that, but at least to have an image of what you are trying to be and how the IP will help you to reach that. All right, thank you so much, Abbas. Thank you so much. Uh, Chloe, you mind sharing any, perhaps you remember anything from your own mm -hmm. IFP interview as well? Any questions, okay. any answers you gave? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, um, what I uh, remember from my interview, uh, he it started with the classical uh, question that uh, what is your background? Uh, what are your expectations? So present yourself, uh, what, are, what is your background? Then uh, why IFP, of course? Why this master in particular? Why um, this, uh, this position, like in my case, a uh, reservoir engineer? Why do you want to, to become that? Um, so we mentioned that uh, we speak about a little of your hobbies or your uh, sports and, and stuff like that. And uh, at the end of the of the of the interview, uh, so oh yeah, very. Uh, I mentioned that earlier also, but uh, very uh, important. They take your CV and go through every detail of it. So if uh, you have done internship or if you have uh, work experience, you have to break down in few words, in few sentences, what you what did you do? How is it related? Um, how can it um, uh, stress your point and uh, show your interest in uh, some fields uh, or, or uh, that could be good for your application. And um, so uh, be very careful about this and also like very, any words you put here uh, to that you can develop, uh, I mean. And uh, so in the end uh, of the interview, uh, at, at least for me, it was the sponsorship uh, part. So Abbas already uh, spoke about that a bit. And uh, yeah, it's true that you have to, to show motivation and show willingness. So uh, you have to say to them that you already tried a lot uh, for, uh, for a sponsor. I mean, you, you have to try a lot. Uh, the you I remember that I spent uh, a lot of companies, uh, and uh, I knew that for example for Equinor uh, they have uh, uh, internal special um, yeah offers. So at the end of the of the interview they proposed me uh, like to uh, hand uh, my CV to uh, to Equinor and I said uh, okay, and um, yeah so that's it. That it can be, um, I don't know, uh, a control to you to to see if the interview went well, because uh, usually they do that with the like, candidates that they uh, feel it was um, uh, promising, you know. So um, yeah, that's it. And uh, how I contacted the sponsor. That I mean, they really want to have proof in a way that you contacted the sponsors. So uh, give uh, give a bit of details. Uh, what did you and uh, what did you send? Uh, how in on which um, on which platform did you uh, find the, the your sponsors? So did you apply uh, by replying to an offer on their website or on LinkedIn? You contacted someone, etc. So show that you have uh, already searched for. It. I would like just just to add that uh, okay, uh, it's it's uh, the interviews with the IFP are delicate, uh, chill, so uh, there is no stress. 
nothing uh, they don't they don't ask uh, these kind of philosophic questions uh, there's nothing from that so um, so try to be uh, to be certainly honest to be yourself uh, to to be calm and uh, just answer the questions be prepared and try to be uh, to, to to be just yourself so uh, there's nothing nothing complicated about the the interviews with the IFP it's just to to have the sense of how to answer questions but not uh, no, it's it's not yet uh, complicated all right thank you uh, rodrigo yes uh, well just to sum up what Coloya and Eva say that uh, their, their advice was amazing. Um, in my case, the interview was very chill, as I was saying. I had the interview with the head of career of my program. I just had one, and it was amazing. Like, it was very kind. Um, she, uh, the, her name is Karin Labat. Uh, she's the, the head of the Geodata Management Program, and she was very nice with me. And uh, I also, in the interview, uh, I, I see the interviews, like, as we say in my in my country, es hora de vender tu charque, uh, which basically means that you have to sell yourself as the last Coca Cola of the desert, uh, <laughs> if we can say so. And um, I remember that, um, as I was saying, it was just minding yourself to to answer some some basic question like what is your background, why do you choose IFP school, um, why geodata management. Um, how is, is, is it going to contribute to your future career goals and everything that you are going to say in the interview, you've already done it in the application process in the answering uh, the positions of responsibility or why did you choose the career path? Uh, all, all of that, all of that answers you already know because you've already answered that. So you just have to study that. And if I can give you some, some tips is prepare yourself like uh, what I like to do is um, in the previous, in, in the past, I I like to gather with some friends that I trust a lot and uh, we do mock interviews. Like they, they ask me some questions, I reply and they told me, hey, this was not good. You can improve on this or you can say, you can say this better. You know, it's really nice. I recommend you to do that. Another tip that I can give you is to do your research you know, get to know what at the IFP school uh, more in deep, then get to know your program more in deep. Tell the the your interviewers that you you got in touch with um, with previous students because that shows also the the interest um, the interest that you have in the program. I remember that I told Karin that I got in touch with some students and they told me that the program is good, is nice. And because uh, the, the the head of careers know all of the students, so it's nice to to mention that. And yeah, basically that. After that, Abbas and Chloe summarized very well. Yeah, and I have a very important point. At the end of each interview, they will ask you if you have questions, and you must have questions. Yeah, you yeah. must have this is a really important part and they must not be shallow questions they must be really a question of value and a question of interest so it's it's really something that you are worried about or that uh, that, that you want to know that you are keen to know so try to prepare at least one or two questions for the end of the interview because certainly they will ask you to yeah. ask them questions this is really a very important part of the interview Definitely. That's true. Yeah. Um, and I wanted just to add something for all people, uh, all stressed people out there that uh, are like me. Uh, I was uh, very stressed for this interview. I didn't, uh, I had uh, many interviews in my life before, so I went a bit stressed, but they are really kind and they are very um, caring and uh, it will be uh, okay even if you stress. Uh, it's in English, so prepare well in English. Uh, or at least for uh, English programs, I think, and um, and yeah, do uh, as much as you can mock uh, mock uh, interviews. Yeah. That would help. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Um... Okay. Uh, I know we've been speaking a bit about. Um... 
interviews. Uh, Rodrigo, could you also share? I don't know. I don't know how your interview went concerning your scholarship. I, I yes. So everybody will probably have different. I don't even know if you had an interview. Yeah. yeah. But if you did, can you just share how it went? Um, just maybe the very specific questions that were different from what IFP asked. Sure. Think, yeah. Well, in my case, I applied for the total sponsorship, the total energies sponsorship. Uh, as mm -hmm. always, I saw you slides uh, pre in the previous slide. They, I found the offer on LinkedIn. I just applied through the the careers portal, and I got an interview with Total Energies, but they rejected me. They didn't uh, want to sponsor me, and I remember the uh, the the. Um, the questions from Total Energies were more, were more focused on the career path, on why do you want to, do you want to pursue this, this master's degree? Were not very, very open questions like the IFPS school one, were more focused. So mm -hmm. in that case, I would totally recommend to um, investigate more about the different subjects of your program and how you can fit that in your career path. And since Total rejected me, um, they were very kind to offer me a feedback session in which they, they told me, uh, you, were at, you were in the top of the, the ones that we are going to select for this program, but we decided to go to with, with another students because they um, I, we didn't see very well how your career path or what you explained how the geodata management program can fit well in what you want for, for your career path. And then uh, I took that advice to prepare myself for the um, interview with Equinor. And, and how did I get an interview with Equinor? Where, as Chloe mentioned previously, um, during my interview with the IPS school, the, the, the head of career, Karin, uh, she mentioned, hey, can I share your, your CV with Equinor? And I told her, yeah, of course. Of course, I shared my CV. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to ask. And then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, something like that. And then uh, uh, the the interview with Equinor was um, later, but for in that in that reason, in that moment, taking into account my previous experience with Total Energies, uh, considering that they told me that I was among the top of the selected students for the sponsoring opportunity. I took the advice on focus more on, on, on why G, GDM, the GDM program will fit better in my career path. And uh, that helped me a lot to ace my interview with Equinor, which was very well, which was very relaxed. I had an interview, I remember with three people and um, they were very interested in, in, in me and they decided to choose me afterwards. So just that, just do your research, of course, for. Each company that you're applying, Total Energy, Sequin, or, uh, or whichever, um, look for the mission, vision of the company, look what they want, look what they are doing in the in the in the domain that you want to apply. For example, Equinor is uh, investing a lot in data management, and that's why they want data managers. And uh, in that case, uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, these companies release many reports about what they do, what they result, read them, prepare yourself with the information that the, 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 that company gives you. So you will have a better chance to get an, an sponsorship from, from, this, uh, um, from these companies. All right, thank you so much, Rodrigo. Uh, Chloe, how about you? Did you apply to Total separately? How, how did your own, how did Total come about? And then how did, uh, your scholarship interview, go. can you just tell us how that went briefly? Okay, so um, to I, I already a bit uh, mentioned mentioned this, but uh, I applied to uh, a lot of uh, companies like sending uh, CVs. So sometimes re replying to an offer, for example, uh, for Pirenko, I uh, replied to uh, their offer of uh, sponsorship. I found it in their website. And uh, I didn't have uh, answers or, or very late. So, um, so that's, uh, that's also something to uh, expect. Sometimes you don't have uh, answers or very or too late. And um, for Total, uh, they were also uh, long to reply, but uh, 
for um, okay, I, I will go to each other after, but uh, they basically set me up for interviews. Um, I uh, tried to reach to HRs uh, on uh, LinkedIn uh, to a lot of, uh, of companies. Uh, I remember one, uh, it was Schlumberger, and um, they told me basically that they uh, would take only uh, apprenticeship and not sponsorship. Uh, and uh, that's not, that, not, that was not fitting my uh, program, RGE. So uh, that was basically it. Um, and for other companies like uh, BP, I think it was the uh, same story. Um, after that, so for the total, uh, I applied to their uh, offer of uh, sponsorship on uh, that I found on LinkedIn, but there it's on total careers as well. And um, I, I was set up for the first round of interview, which is a, base, a very basic interview of about uh, 15 minutes, 15 minutes maximum. It's online and you have to send um, a video of yourself, like record yourself. They will uh, provide you a link and uh, ask you three questions. And uh, there are basics like uh, present yourself and your background. Um, I mean, uh, what are, why are you interested uh, to uh, do this program? And um, why, yeah, what is specialization? And where do you see yourself uh, in the future? Uh, then if uh, they accept uh, this uh, step, uh, so you just sent uh, this, uh, this video, they will, uh, um, they will have an interview in like online or in person. Uh, I was on site, so uh, it was in person for me um, to discuss the first, discuss further uh, of your uh, application. And again, they will ask for the for your background. Uh, they will come to your CV and every line, and you will have to develop. Um, the specific question that I remember was. Um, they asked uh, to me, um, uh, in my opinion, uh, for how many years the uh, uh, senior uh, engineer uh, should have, I mean, how many years of experience a senior uh, engineer should have. Um, and uh, I said about like a minimum five years of experience. They said to me, uh, uh, that would be like more uh, 10 years even. So that's uh, how, I mean, that's uh, some questions they can ask. They asked if uh, my uh, physics and math background were uh, enough. Uh, I mean, what, what I was thinking about this, it was my opinion. And um, I mean, uh, to me it was, uh, uh, regarding my background, it was okay. Um, and uh, yeah, they asked if they, <clears throat> if I would be willing to work on the oil and gas um, projects because uh, they know that we are in the energy transition and we are more maybe uh, attracted to uh, um, CCUS or geothermal. Um, but they want to know if you are uh, willing to work on this because it's also your motivation, your mental health, like your uh, willingness to work on these projects uh, that they are basically uh, checking and they even ask if uh, what I what I think that my family would think about this so that they want to know if uh, you'll be uh, like you'll be uh, good with uh, with this is if it's uh, fine by you um, and uh, I have a few words to say also on pairing co uh, interviews because uh, um, I reached out to uh, someone that did this uh, interview. So he told me basically that uh, for sponsorship, it's different from apprenticeship. Uh, first of all, for sponsorship, they only have one interview with, with HR. And for apprenticeship, they have more interviews and more technical interviews. Um, so what I know from him um, for sponsorships, they ask a lot of personal questions. For example, they ask him, what do you do on Christmas? And what, uh, what are your, yeah, what do you do with your family at Christmas, for example? That very personal questions and they go deep into that to see if you're 
are destabilized or not and basically mm -hmm. to test you kind of so be prepared to that if you want to go to Perango. that's it oh thank you so much chloe thank you so much uh, abbas and you also share how very briefly share how yours went with uh total how did yeah. you did you apply how did total come about and then uh, okay uh, uh, so uh, for me, uh, it was exceptional because uh, I didn't pass any interview. I was already at Total. And uh, okay. so Total, they are not sponsoring uh, anymore, unfortunately, in the PEPD program. So that's why uh, So it was internal stuff without the intervention of HR. But uh, at the same time, I passed uh, about six interviews with six other, other uh, companies. Uh, and I would like just to mention that I am following the program in apprenticeship. Um, and it mainly concerns the students who are in France. So uh, who are at least residents uh, in France. Um, so in general, uh, as I was an apprenticeship uh, environment, so it was uh, it was more uh, about technical interviews. So uh, the first time it will be HR uh, interview with uh, with some skills questions and uh, background and uh, you know these of the, the 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 normal HR questions. And the other phase was normally uh, more technical questions. Why would you like to pursue studies after after finishing uh, your engineering studies? What's the added value of uh, of the IFP? Why you are interested in our company? Uh, why I remember this question popped up. Why would we sponsor you? Because <laughs> you know why? So uh, it's it's always about the ability to to make a link between what you are looking for and what the company is looking for. So it's to read about each company you are applying for, to know their strategy, to know their ambitions, to know what areas, career areas in their, in their, in their company is really, uh, is really uh, strategic for them, is really futuristic for them, and to shed the light on that. For instance, digitalizing things. Uh, I don't know, CCUS, geothermal, they are new trends. So you try to shed the light that the IFP is a top edge uh, institution that's able to train me to be able to come and help you in your transformation or in your development or in achieving your, your strategy. So, uh, so yeah. and just to give to give uh, positive vibes so i i got almost all of these it's not because i'm uh, i'm a superhero it's just because i was so serious and i analyzed every company what do they want and uh, how they are orienting their 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 philosophy of uh, of working and to to put myself in this context so it's to con contextualize myself. And at the end of the day, in an interview, you are trying to sell yourself in a very intelligent way. So try to do that. Try to do that by having all the elements and all the answers that, uh, that, that you want. All right, thank you so much, Abbas. Thank you so much. Uh... I can add uh, maybe a little thing. At the end of the interview, they also asked if I was applying to any other companies. <laughs> and I said yes uh, and uh, I even did another interview in for another company uh, but it was quite informal so I'm not uh, speaking about this it was too informal basically yeah. but um, yeah I, I was uh, I was honest uh, on this yeah but, uh, I as I was mentioned I did uh, research specifically on total to show my interest in total so yeah, yeah. and and I will just add, uh, I, I, I faced another level of complexity where he asked me, which one will you choose and why? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you must, be, you must try to be prepared to try to control your reactions because they analyze these things. So the body language is important. It's not only about what you are saying. It's about your tone. 
um, how much confident you are because the person facing you will know when you are confident about what you are saying. So try to talk, try to train with the, either with your 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 friends or uh, with yourself in the mirror. Try to to speak and listen to yourself what you are saying. This is really important when you are trying to uh, to do interviews. So yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I guess for, for people, for instance, who are interested in Total, uh, as, uh, as uh, Chloe mentioned, I hope that I'm pronouncing your name well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> uh, finally. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, Total, they have the ambitions of transformation. Uh, but at the same time, uh, because I, I know the question about oil and gas, they don't want you to say no. Actually, they need people to work in the oil and gas. We need oil and gas. So try not not to uh, not to read about Total to see that they are transforming and the, uh, renewables. This is really really important and it's part of our ambitions. But it's not the whole story. We are still relying on oil. So try not not to be uh, not to be uh, bizarre when you are answering no oil is not good no you must show your interest and you can you can say that in my career I would like to work in projects regarding oil and gas and CCUS and geothermal so to have to have the full package of knowledge and to uh, to, to 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 be effective in many sorts of energies. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I think yeah. now we can start to answer some questions. I've been seeing a lot in the chat. Uh, Rodrigo, let me let me throw this question at you. Uh, somebody asked, that's Adonis Ortega, if I'm right. Uh, do you recommend us to apply to several programs or focus on only one? You know, basically, if you're applying to IFP school, we know we can apply to three. But what do you recommend? What do you think? Well, actually, Chloe just answered this question on the on the chat. Um, uh, oh, okay. Uh, I I honestly um, didn't have another option, at least for IFP school. I applied in, in in parallel to the Imperial College London, and I got accepted to the Imperial College London. But I was also also looking for a sponsorship from Total Energies, and see, since they rejected me. I, I chose to come to IFP school. And, um, but as Chloe mentioned in the, in the group chat, there are many people that apply to different programs because you have the option to apply to three, mm -hmm. but you have to have a ranking. Now you have to rank which one is the most, that is the one that you like the most, the one that you want to be admitted and mm -hmm. stress on that and focus on that. That will be my, my advice. Maybe Chloe can, can explain a little bit better because she had this, this um this situation and by the way before before handing it um for this for just remember the ifp event which is which will be focused on how to finance your studies i will share the link again in the um, in the group in the in the chat and and ifp school will be more will be able to answer all of your questions regarding this and yeah that's it yeah and uh, maybe uh, another uh, quick uh, information is that uh, the, the ranking and the fact that I had uh, three choices uh, came up when uh, I was uh, applying in, um, in IFP and uh, when I had a kind of a second interview by uh, IFP it was more, it was less formal, um, but uh, I was uh, waiting for a total response. And uh, it was basically uh, the end of the application uh, uh, time. So Carla also mentioned to me, Carla is sorry, the, the advisor of our program. Uh, she uh, uh, I mean, uh, presented to me a sponsorship uh, by BNP Paribas, I think, so a bank uh, that was sponsoring uh, PEPD. And PEPD was my second choice, I think. So that's uh, that's why uh, choices and ranking are important. So if you can't have your first choice uh, and you are struggling for uh, sponsorship, the uh, program advisor can always uh, propose to you um, sponsors uh, for maybe your second choice. And uh, that's how it works, basically. Yeah, and I, I will add just two sentences. 
uh, I guess two applications uh, are good because uh, as Chloe mentioned, uh, in certain cases, you may not be admitted to one program, but you have potential in, uh, in another. Uh, but three applications, I guess you must have a very logical answer when you uh, when they ask you and maybe try to prevent to to apply for two different centers. So not to do process to apply for a process and energy and then to apply to reservoir because they will look at your uh, what are you trying to do uh, because they are two different career pathways. So try to be in the same center and to centralize your, your vision towards two programs, because like that, you will have a plan B in another program. Okay, okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, Abbas, there's, even a, there's actually a question in the chat box for you. Uh, yeah. Someone is asking whether him being from Argentina is an impediment, is an impediment to apply for sponsorship. What do you think? Yeah, actually, uh, first of all, PEPD is now in English since the last year, so there is no problem. Uh, this is the first thing. There is no need to speak French in order to attend the PEPD. And, um, and uh, we have actually uh, a colleague who is from Argentina this year with us in the PEPD. Uh, he got the, uh, the sponsor of the IFP, so yeah, yeah, it's possible. Certainly, it's possible. All right. All right, thank you. Uh, there's also a question. I'll just throw that out. Um, oh, more questions keep coming. And yeah, just to, to continue, because I was reading the whole question, just to continue, yeah, to mention in the in the interview that uh, to, to, to show your interest to, uh, maybe I can send uh, for this, uh, it's, for instance, Trident Energy is, uh, is sponsoring, uh, so he can uh, approach them. And in the interview, you can say that Trident Energy is, is one of the sponsoring companies. I try to approach them because I guess that Trident, they have also internal connection with the IFP. So this is the name of the company. Uh, I'm sending it in the, in the, in the uh, chat. So yeah. Okay. Uh, there's also a question here about okay. I can just answer this. I studied geophysics. How will it? How will? How difficult would it be to change to petroleum engineering? Just like Chloe, Chloe did um, geology. So it's possible you can, as long as you're able to put in a very good, uh, convincing cover letter, CV, and then um, during the interview you're able to sell yourself to why as to why you want to do that, then it's very possible. In my class, for instance, we have uh, three geoscientists, so it's very, very possible. Yeah, uh, specific, uh, specifically if you are taking the PGS program uh, or the equivalent for the uh, next year, I don't know how is it called, but in the PGS program, if it's what you're aiming at, uh, they have a, 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 a fair part of uh, geophysics already. So don't worry, you, you will have a, uh, geophysics part to uh, relate on and uh, geoscience to learn uh, from. So that's totally possible. Okay. Uh, there's this question here um, about sponsorships for ETEM. I don't know if any of you has any idea of sponsorships for ETEM. Uh, personally, one that I know, I know two. One is a Nigerian scholarship uh, that has petroleum the one I'm also on PTDF, it does not discriminate with whichever program you are going for. Then the other one is um, Foundation Talk. Uh, so those are the two. I don't know if any of you has any, you know, anyone in ETEM that is on any other scholarship. I don't know. I, I can understand the concern because the person is saying uh, most companies are willing to sponsor people for um, geoscience and energy markets, but not for ETEM. I don't know if anyone knows anything. Actually, I don't. Uh, I don't have uh, lots of information about uh, ETEM. Yeah. Unfortunately, no. Maybe yeah. maybe they uh, the person can attend uh, with the IFP because they exactly. actually they, they have all the answers. I guess uh, exactly. they have. Yeah, exactly. So that's 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 it. Um, I would really urge you to, because one, we don't have, we can't bring everybody from every program to speak, uh, but we would really urge you guys to attend this apprenticeship and sponsorship program from IFP. It's starting on the ninth. Um, Rodrigo has posted the link. Try and register and attend. It's very very important. 
Um, there's a question, yeah. how can you increase your chances to get in an interview in addition to applying on the website of Total Energies? What was the question, sorry? Uh, how can you increase your chances to get in an interview in addition to applying to Total Energies? Do you think there's anything you could do to increase your chances of getting into Total Energies? Uh, well, I, I don't, it, it's just to have a good application uh, already uh, for Total. And uh, so I don't think so. So it's just about, I don't know, Chloe, if, if you have anything to add, but I guess it's just about the, the good application. I'm sorry, I was responding to another uh, message. Uh, what's the question? Uh, the person, okay, the question is, how can you increase your chances of getting an interview with Total Energies? Mm. You think there's anything special or you just have to do the best you can from day one? Or So, yes, sure. Um, in my case, uh, a bit like a bus, actually, I was already uh, doing an internship. I was currently doing an internship and I, I mean, as for the second time even in total. So maybe that also helped. Um, and uh, what I can say is that uh, they have a lot uh, I think they, they have a lot of uh, interviews, maybe not a lot of uh, selected in the end, but they, they, they do uh, make a lot of interviews. So uh, just to prepare yourself uh, as best as you can uh, for your application. And uh, most likely you, you'll get uh, called. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, so... Uh, yes. My screen has gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no problem. Let me just share it again. Um, it's a, it's so lovely, isn't it? <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, so there's one last thing I really want everybody to see. Um, these are our LinkedIn contacts. Um, you can add us up on LinkedIn, ask other questions because we definitely cannot answer all the questions here. Yeah, I guess Maybe. I guess there's there's only one question that uh, that um, sorry for uh, no problem. It was, no problem. Uh, it was regarding the apprenticeship offers for foreigners. Mm. So I think that uh, it's now possible. Okay, I'm um, I'm I'm not I'm not 100% sure, but uh, before it wasn't possible, but this year. Uh, I, I know some people who are doing uh, apprentice, not apprenticeship, it's called alternance. So it's sandwich program because there are two different kinds of, uh, of contracts, but it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's not important. So I guess it's possible that uh, mm -hmm. if, they, if the company, they have interest in you, it's possible to do uh, alternating and not apprenticeship because it's just the type of, of contract. In apprenticeship, you will be employee at the company and alternating, you will not be a uh, employee. So you will have a monthly allowance and then you spend part of the time at the company and part of the time uh, uh, the IFP. So I guess for, for alternating, it's possible. So yeah, if, if, uh, if, if there is a for, foreigner, because it's, regard, it's, 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 uh, it's regarding the French law actually, the, that's limiting this point. But uh, I guess for alternating, thing it's possible for foreigners okay. so yeah just to make things uh clear okay. yeah all right thank you so much uh i'm sorry guys i know we can't answer everyone's question but at this point we would have to go um please try to reach us on linkedin if you have further questions and again once more the person that was asking question about can foreigners um and foreigners partake in apprenticeship, it's very important that yeah. you attend this event to even be sure. Maybe some companies do, maybe some don't. We don't, I cannot give the answer. Yeah, then yeah. It's important you try to come for yeah. this. It's the yeah. first time IFP is doing this. Uh, yeah, I know that accents, accents, for instance, they are doing this this year. I know someone with this case. Okay. So uh, for total, I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. All right, no problem. Um, All right. 
uh, maybe just a few words. Uh, I know I know we have to give it short, but I've seen this question, what kind of benefits from sponsorship programs you got from the company? So uh, unlike the, the apprenticeships where you get, uh, you know, the internship part uh, and the working experience twice, uh, in the sponsorship uh, program, you have, um, uh, you have the internship at the end of uh, your your master, uh, your program here, and uh, you'll get. Uh, I mean, they will pay for the um, the how do you say that the the school? fees the fees yeah the fees the yeah. tuition fees they will yeah pay for the school tuition uh, for the fees and they will pay you you uh, not a rent not a salary I don't know how to say it but uh, they will basically give you money for the uh, housing and for the living uh, costs. Okay, yeah. so that's basically uh, the advantages. All right, thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much to all the speakers. Rodrigo, thank you. Abbas, thank you. Chloe, thank you. And to mm -hmm. our audience, thank you. Um, we will hey, you say maybe we can we can take a picture of all the participants if they can turn yeah, on. Yeah, that would be perfect. That would be perfect, yeah. if, guys. If you could please turn on your video camera, so we could. Uh... You will be famous. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and stop sharing your screen, man. So you, so everyone can see us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for attending. Uh, sorry if we didn't reply to all questions, but. Uh... No, That's but uh, but but for for people with the specific questions, you can reach us out on LinkedIn or yeah. uh, or by any sort. We are at your at your disposal. No yeah. worries. Yes, yes. Yeah, definitely. Good. Oh, nice to see. Nice to see your face. Oh, it's nice to see everyone. <laughs> yeah. it's nice to see everyone. Oh, <laughs> nice to see everyone. Thank you all, all of right. you for attending. Uh, we wish you the best of luck in your IP application. And yeah. as uh, my colleagues mentioned, you are totally free to reach us reach us out on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. I, I I've been on your side. I know that uh, this is some sometimes struggling, so I I love to help out people. Yeah, so, me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we we are we are the most people able to understand you because we pass through the same process. Exactly. So we know your concerns. There is no no question that's not uh, not logic. Every question is possible. So yeah, and we are here to help you. Say uh, FPE. <laughs> I <laughs> okay, thank right. you. All right, thank you everyone. Do have a wonderful day. You can reach us out to on LinkedIn as always. Take care, everyone. Bye for now. Thank, thank you everyone. all and the best of luck for all of you. We yeah. hope to see you the next year in at the IFP. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you for your time. Bye, guys. Bye. Yeah, Bye. Thank you.